Hi everyone, this is Happy Bird from happybirdsglitternest.blogspot.com and today I'm going to show you how to make these adorable little Christmas ornaments out of your leftover ribbon and button bling and I made these simply with popsicle sticks. Now, I bought this whole bag of Createology popsicle sticks from Michaels and it was $3.99 and they're very wide as you can tell these are a full inch in width and eight inches long and I was able to get four of these um, little ornaments out of one stick so um, and if you have a coupon that's even better because you can get these cheaper than $3.99 and I looked in my stash to see what kind of ribbon I had and uh, for example, the little snowman. I made this with some leftover ribbon with kind of a silver edge to it. Um, there was just enough on the roll to do this, and I was really happy about that. And then I used some grow grain ribbon here that I found in my stash. And I just wrapped some of these ornaments with um, simple beading thread and with this particular one I used ribbon that I found at the Dollar Tree last year. I'll show you that one right here like that. I'm sure they'll have it again this year. And with this one here I used the dress it up button I just cut the shank off the back little fairy did the same thing with the snowman that was a dress it up button as well and um, glued this on and wrapped it with this rose gold cord that I found not too long ago at the Target dollar spot so I thought that was pretty cool and I just used ribbon that was no larger than 5 eighths of an um, inch wide. Actually, it's probably better if it's a little less than that, but um, you know, you could use any ribbon you'd like. Uh, the only thing that I would highly suggest is to not use the glitter ribbon. Now, I'm not talking about ribbon like this because the fibers have a sheen to it. That type of ribbon is fine, but when I made one of these out of the ribbon with glitter that was glued on top, the bling that I put on to that base was pretty much swallowed up because you there was so much glitter in the background that it was really distracting. And um, so I chose not to use that, but that's just a, a personal preference. But grow grain ribbon is nice to use. You know, any any other ribbon, um, I would suggest, with the exception of the the glitter ribbon. And as far as the bling, I purchased um, a lot of my bling from a Chinese seller that I've used for several years on eBay. I've always been very happy with them and I've always received my packages in two to three weeks. Uh, it's always free shipping. I usually walk away with um, you know five or ten pieces of bling for $2.99, $3.99 and that's free shipping. So um, I'll go ahead and give you the link down below. Now I'm not saying that you'll have the exact experience that I've had as far as um, the length of time that it took to ship but um, I've never been disappointed. That's just my personal experience. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to cut one and a half inch long pieces. And basically all I did was take my ruler and just kind of line this up with the ruler so you won't be drawing your line cockeyed. <laughs> and I just took a mechanical pencil and measured one and a half inches and just made a line 
right here. And once you cut out your first piece that's that's fairly straight, then it's great because then you have a pattern that you can work off of and basically this is what I did. I'll show you. Now I cut off the rounded part at the end like so. So I just kind of lined it up and did this. I like the mechanical pencil because I can really get in there. And, you know, just basically did this all the way down. I think I got four of them. And when you go to cut them, I just used a pair of strong long blade scissors and tried my best to make a straight cut. Now, I will tell you, it's not going to be 100% perfect, but you want to get it um, as even as you possibly can. You might have to go in and trim just a teeny bit off like that. And if it splinters a little bit, that's okay. Um, you can take a fingernail file like this and I would just run it across about three times like that. I wouldn't do any more because if you sit there and sand it and sand it, you're going to get all kinds of um, splinters. But just to kind of smooth it down just slightly. And, you know, like I said, it's not going to be 100% perfect, but it's okay because you're going to be wrapping it up with ribbon anyway, just as long as it looks pretty good. There we go. See, this is what I would consider pretty good. Okay, pretty straight. So, that would be one that I would definitely use. And, um, Some of the bling I used hot glue on, and um, like these little dress it up buttons I used hot glue on. And I used hot glue on this one because this was um, uh, acrylic. This was, um, it, it seemed like metal on the back, but I was able to cut that off fairly easily. And all I did was use the nipper tools here, but you could use wire cutters too, I imagine. And But I did use E6000 on that one because it was a little heavier. Okay, so let's get started because I'm backtracking here. I'm going to use this ribbon that I found in my stash. And as you can tell, it's not glittery, it's shimmery, it's the actual fibers. There's not glitter that um, has been glued on there. And you're just going to make a straight cut at the top, just like that. Okay. Let me move this back a little bit. And we're going to wrap this this direction first from top to bottom and around because what we're going to be doing is covering these edges too so we want to do that first from top to bottom so I'm just going to take my hot glue gun and I'm just going to put a little in a corner I'm not going to make it bloppy I'm going to spread it out and we're using this just as an anchor we're just going to anchor this on like so. Okay? Right at the corner. All right. So I'm just going to hold this taut and just kind of wrap it around like this. And you may have to go at an angle like that, and that's fine. Just make sure that you 
have all the little wooden pieces covered. See there's a little bit here on the edge. So I'm just going to continue to wrap this around and then I'm going to stop at the top. But before I stop I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue. I'm going to barely squeeze my trigger and then I'm just going to move it around with my nozzle. Because I don't want anything that's bulky. I mean I don't want a big giant lump of hot glue underneath there. So that's why I kind of move it around uh, with a nozzle making a thin layer. Okay, so I'm going to cut this off like so. Alright. Turn it around. Trim that a little. Okay, so now this looks really good at the top and the bottom because you can see that the sides are covered. So now we're going to cover this side, but we're going to go this direction, around. Okay, And I'm going to make sure that's nice and straight, which seems to be pretty straight. Let's give it a little trim. And I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue the same way, barely squeezing the trigger and just kind of moving it with my nozzle. So we want it to be anchored like so. And I'm going to wrap this around, holding it taut. Now see, I'm going to go down a little bit, but it's going to be a little bit at an angle, like so. And make sure that we've covered all the corners. See, you don't want anything like that. Making it nice and straight, wrapping that around. So I'm going to stop here. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put a little hot glue in here. Move it around with my nozzle to anchor it. Like so. Alright. So now, yeah. kind of leaked through a little bit, but that's okay. I can use that as the back. <laughs> All right. Cut that off. Make sure it's trimmed. Okay. I'm going to use this as the back part. And um All right. Let me roll this up. Hold on for just a second. Okay, get my ba my brain in gear here. <laughs> All right, so I have the base. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this hole puncher. Now you can use um, an awl or um, a scrapbooking hole punch, anything you'd like. I purchased this and it came with two different little um, punches, one smaller and one slightly larger that I could screw on, but I just um, used the one that um, came with it already. So um, I really like this. In fact, I can give you the name of this and the link of the person I bought it from. I think I got this on eBay, I'm pretty sure. Oops, let me move this camera up a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to punch fairly close to the edge, but not so close that it'll splinter. And I'm going to eyeball it and see that it's the middle. And then I'm going to punch it right through everything. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on this end. Because one end, you're gonna, it's going to hold a charm, and on the other end, it will hold the um, loop at the top to hang on your Christmas tree. Okay. There we 
we go. Like that. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to get some jump rings here. And I think I'm going to use a 7 millimeter jump ring for the top. It could be an 8 millimeter if you want to. I think 7 or 8 will do just fine. So this will be the top, and then I will just run a piece of bead, beading um, cord through it to hang on the tree. Now this bottom part here, it's going to be for the charm. And I'm going to put one piece on here for now. I might end up putting a couple more. I think um, I'm going to use another button bling like this and I had to put on two more um, to make it dangle. So we'll see about that. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose my button bling and I already have piece right here that I purchased a while back and I cut off the shank and as you can tell this is a little raised still and it's kind of a it, it's what I would consider a softer metal um, but you can still use this because instead of a hot glue gun I'm just using E6000 and I can put that on like that in the middle and you want it in the middle because you want a little room where you can wrap the cord around here as well as the top. Okay, and I think I might use a red button um, to use as the dangle. So I like to use these little tubes of E6000. They come four to a pack because I feel like I have better control over this um, rather than using the big giant one, the big giant tube. So I think I'll put a little more on here, just on this side. I'm putting a little more on it than I normally would simply because it has a depression in the middle. down firmly like so. So I'm going to allow this to dry and then um, we'll come back and we'll finish this up with the cord and the charms and we'll be finished. Okay so it's um, dried enough for me to handle. Now you can buy beading cord at any craft store. They carry this at Michael's and um, I've also seen it at Joann's. I would advise to use a coupon though. Um, if you're going to purchase this it will be a little less expensive. And um, this beading cord here, I accidentally bought the stretchy kind but um, where the other one isn't but that's okay because I'm, I still um, use it. So at first I was going to use the gold but I don't know really how well that would show up with me, you know, using the gold. So I'm going to instead, I think, maybe wrap this with silver. And we do have a little bit of silver in the metal part of this bead, so maybe that would work better I don't know let's see uh, 
don't know. I still kind of like the gold. Maybe it's just because I'm partial to gold. So even if it doesn't show up a whole lot, I think I'm still going to use that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the back. And like I said, I kind of made a goof there. Um, I probably should have taken a toothpick when I pressed this down, but I used my finger so the low temp hot glue gun got on my finger and pulled through the fibers and made this mess. So learn from my mistake. So um, I'm just going to make right above this jump ring here a line of low temp hot glue and I'm going to place this cord in it like that. And it's just going to hold it is what it's going to do. Okay. Now I'm just going to wrap this around above the jump ring as many times as I think it looks good. And so that's basically what I'm doing here. I think I'll make this fairly thick so at least it'll give it a little dimension even though it's gold just like the ribbon and then I'm just going to leave this on the roll I'm going to barely squeeze the trigger make a line of hot glue on the back and pull this down into it and allow it to cool and I'm just going to snip the edge like so. So now we have the bottom part done and if you want you can adjust these a little by squeezing these down like this or you can just leave it alone. And I'm going to do the same thing at the top right here below the jump ring. I'm going to put a line of glue barely squeezing my trigger and I'm going to lay my cord in it or my beading thread. I call it cord, but it's beading thread. And I'm just going to wrap until I think it looks good. Said I'm going to make it a little thicker because I want to give it some dimension. Okay, so I think that looks good. So I'm going to hold this cord, put a thin line of hot glue, barely squeeze it, and lay my cord in it, pull it down like so. That's the back, and this is the front. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little charm. Now if you just have one little charm um, to put at the bottom, you can use just one jump ring, but if you have um, something like this where um, you can also make a little dangle out of your jump rings. This is just a little button I used. So I used three jump rings on this. One at the bottom and then two connecting. And I just used seven millimeter. So I'm going to take a couple of other seven millimeter jump rings. And I'm 
I'm just going to slip the uh, button on this one. And this this was just from a cheap package of buttons that I bought in red and green at Walmart. It was just one of these Christmas embellishment packages. And then I'm going to open up the next jump ring. And connect that. And then I'm going to slip it on here. Make sure that it's on the right side. <gasps> okay. There we go. That looks a little better, huh? Okie dokie. There we go. So, now I'm just going to slip um, some bead cord at the top to hang from our tree. And I think this is a nice size ornament because like I said you could use it on your large tree or your small tree. And I'm going to make a little knot up here. Actually probably a couple little knots. And then I'm going to cut it as close as I can. And this is what I like to do. Um, I like to dip it, just the knot, in the Mod Podge Super Gloss. This is a one coat gloss finish. And it dries like glass, so it's not going to look muddy or anything. After it dries, it'll be clear. And I just dip it in there like that and then just kind of wipe it a little bit on the edges right here and you can lay this down on a piece of plastic to dry and it'll dry clear I did that on, on all of the other ornaments that I made right here I'll, I'll show you in a minute Actually, I don't have a piece of plastic available, so I'm just going to lay it on this bag for now. So I think this turned out really cute, but as you can tell here, I used the Mod Podge one coat gloss on that. You can't tell. You can either keep the knot at the top, or you can just run it to the bottom like that. So you can't see the knot. So I thought these all turned out really cute. And like I said, I'll give links to everything on my blog at happybirdsglitternest.blogspot.com and as well as down here in the drop-down bar. Let's see, and then I did this one. You can make them any way you want. And they become pretty addicting to make, I will tell you that. I thought this turned out really cute too. So go through your stash and see what buttons, ribbon, and charms you have in cord. And um, make some of these little ornaments. I think you'll enjoy it. So thank you so much for being patient with me and watching my video. I know sometimes I can get long-winded about things, uh, but I do appreciate you hanging in there with me, and I plan on making more Christmas um, ornaments, so um, subscribe if you haven't already to me by hitting the red subscribe button below, and that's about it. Thank you so much, and God bless each and every one of you. Bye-bye. I almost forgot to show you something. I'm so sorry. Um, I was going to let you know you can also do the same thing with washi tape. 
Now, I'm not a washi tape person, really, but I was at Michael's in the clearance section the other day, and they had these huge rolls of washi tape, five yards um, to each roll, and they were regular $7.99, which I would have never paid um, for something like that, but it was marked down on clearance to $1.99, so I picked it up, and just for the heck of it, I wrapped up one of the little um, wooden popsicle stick pieces that I made, and I thought it turned out to be pretty cute. So you could use this as a base as well and glue your bling on. So if you have any washi tape, even if it's not really wide like this, um, you can use it the same way that I showed you how to use uh, the ribbon. So that um, is just a suggestion. Okay, so now I really am signing off. <laughs> Thank you. God bless. Bye-bye.